Punch Professor here at the Jungle Camp Gym. It's late May and it's absolutely beautiful. A famous boxing guru once said, and I quote, people don't know shh poop about boxing. That was Roger Mayweather said that. When he said it, he wasn't talking about the Hall of Fame greats that I'm going to introduce you to in this video. No, he's talking about people like you and like me. Probably a little more like you than me though. Anyhow, the old time Hall of Fame champions all prior to the 1980s, all of them used a very thin bag glove similar to what I have here in my hand. They also used a bag glove very similar to what the UFC and the MMA fight with today. This glove, this type of glove has been around boxing for over 100 years. Anyhow, watch the video, put your answer to the question, why did they use such a glove like this when they punched the bags? That's the question. Comment section down below, put your answer. Thank you. Here's a good photo of Sugar Ray Robinson in his prime. He retired with 174 professional victories, not to mention all the amateur victories he had in his career. Hundreds of amateur victories, I believe what I heard was somewhere near 200 amateur victories and never been defeated as an amateur. Sugar Ray Robinson, some of them out there think that Ray Robinson was the best welterweight ever because he held the welterweight championship twice. Others think Ray Robinson was the greatest out there because he held a middleweight championship. They think he was the greatest middleweight champion. But even more people out there believe he was just the greatest fighter that ever walked the earth. He's just the great Sugar Ray Robinson. Here he is hitting a double end bag. Uh, Ray Robinson hit all the punching bags as good as anybody ever hit a punching bag. Not to mention he hit opponents in a, in a vicious manner. He was just awesome what he did in his workouts, in his training, in his fighting. He was a great tap dancer. What an entertainer. I, I try to copy Ray Robinson and some of the stuff I do on a speed bag, the pin and trap and stuff. That was Ray Robinson. Here's Ray Robinson in his great photo with Joe Lewis. Ray Robinson, if there was anybody who knew secrets, if there was any secret to be known about anything in boxing, I'm sure Ray Robinson knew it. If he didn't, the guy's standing there holding that bag. Joe Lewis, he knew it. And we're going to talk about Joe Lewis also here in, in this video before this is all over. We're going to talk about all these great Hall of Famers and the stuff that they knew. They was wise. They were smart. They had hundreds of professional fights. So what's the secret? Why did virtually all the Hall of Fame greats, old school fighters prior to the 1970s or mid-70s, why did they all use a much smaller bag glove? You see in this photo here with Muhammad Ali. He's pretty there. He's in his prime. Fault like a butterfly, sting like a bee. That's Muhammad Ali. Let me tell you, I was privileged back in the day. It just happened. My father moved the family to Miami Beach from Boston in the 1960s. We moved to First Street in Washington. Up the block, there was a, a boxing gym, Fifth Street in Washington. Fifth Street Gym, one of the most renowned, probably the most renowned gym in the world, ever. Beatles were there. Champions came and went. Willie Pep, I mean, you go on and on. Ray Robinson, all of them came and went. Many of them trained there as the home headquarters. I just happened to be very privileged, didn't know it, but I was at one of the best boxing gyms four, four blocks away and walked to the Fifth Street Gym where fighters like Muhammad Ali uh, frequented and called their home base. I witnessed a lot of other great fighters at the Fifth Street Gym, uh, Hall of Famers. They all, and they all use a small bag glove, virtually no padding. I mean, uh, Willie Pastrano, Louis Rodriguez, these were in the earlier days. Uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, many times I've seen him in the gym, and he used to use a thin bag glove. Alexis Aguayo, he gave me, and Georgie Farinas, and Leroy Lacero, he gave us some tough wear bag gloves. I also have a pair of bag gloves given to me by Muhammad Ali, an Everlast pair. Uh, Aaron Pryor was at the Fifth Street many times, and with Bo Jack, Bo Jack is a trainer, great world champion. 
just so many great stories, so many fond memories of Fifth Street Jim and Muhammad Ali. Uh, on his 36th birthday, me and him was in the dressing room, and he was being a wise guy, and somehow me and him got into a towel fight. And you, you, you don't want to fight too hard with, with six foot three, 225 pound Muhammad Ali, and you're only 135 pounds yourself. So anyhow, he's chasing me around the dressing room with his towel, stinging me up, and I busted out into the gym where there was a lot of photographers, and the gym was packed that day. This is his birthday. And I'm once around the ring and back into the dressing room, and everybody had a good laugh with that one. These last two photos here, this two photos with Joe Frazier and Ali, these are promotional fight photos, uh, professional fights. These were two of the greatest fights the, the heavyweights have ever had. Ali fought this great Hall of Famer, Joe Frazier, three different times. He fought, he fought Kenny Norton three times. He fought Sonny Liston twice. Oh yeah, Sonny Liston. They interviewed Muhammad Ali one time and they asked him, who was the toughest, scariest opponent you ever faced? And he said it was Sonny Liston. Yeah, Sonny Liston. We're going to talk a little bit, a bit about Sonny Liston too. There's some things that were said about them fights and I heard things because I was close to where you could hear things. I was close enough. We're going to talk about Sonny Liston uh, later into this video. But... uh we do recognize that all these great champions, Sonny Liston included, used a very small, thin bag glove. Let's take a look at some of these other great Hall of Fame champions, like Alexis Aguayo. Do I got to tell you about Alexis Aguayo? If I have to tell you about Alexis Aguayo, then you're one of them people that Roger Mayweather was talking about. He was talking about people like you that don't know nothing about Pooh. And don't know nothing about Alexis Aguayo. Alexis Aguayo, fabulous champion. Alexis Aguayo uh, used to work out at many of the gyms around uh, South Florida. I had many occasions to chat with him and discuss punching. It was much of his uh, influence that um, my punching style is patterned after. Nobody punched harder than Alexis Aguayo, pound for pound. Probably the hardest puncher I've ever witnessed up close, pound for pound. Alexis Aguayo was phenomenal. What a great champion. What a gentleman. And uh, as you see, he used a different type of equipment than what, than what is common today in the gyms. Yeah, I did say we take a look at Joe Lewis. You notice the gloves he has on. Joe Lewis, heavyweight champion of the world. Professional fighter for almost 18 years. I think he had like 24, 25 defenses, successful defenses of the heavyweight championship of the world. Think he knew a little bit about boxing? Maybe he knew all the secrets even. Maybe we could ask him, take a look. What kind of gloves was he using? And why? Joe Lewis. He, uh, he's in the Hall of Fame. They made places like the Hall of Fame just for somebody like Joe Lewis. You want to see some beautiful punching? You... Get on YouTube and you find Max Mellon, the second fight with Max Mellon, and watch what Joe Lewis does to him. Oh, you want to see some good Max Mellon? Watch the first fight. Watch what he does to Joe Lewis. Great fighters, great champions, Hall of Famers. They train with different gloves than what you're training with. Why? Here's a great photo of the Hall of Famer, Sonny Liston. Notice the tough wear bag gloves? I had a pair like them when I was a young man. Sonny Liston, he had the most interesting life and death and, and circumstances involving the Italian mob and uh, championship fights that there's a lot of discrepancy if they were on the level or not. Just a short story, though. Keep it a little short. Just to tell you what kind of monster Sonny Liston was. Italian mob found him, got him out of prison. He was, I believe, 19 years old in prison. He was boxing. Somebody knows he was exceptionally good. They put him in the Chicago Golden Gloves. He fought five times in the Chicago Golden Gloves. He knocked out all five men. These are in three-round fights. He's knocking out these, each and every opponent. He went from there to the regional Golden Gloves. He fought five more times, and he knocked out five more men. 
He went from there to the National Golden Glove Championships. He fought five more opponents and he knocked out all five of them. Now he's fought 15 opponents. He's knocked out 15 of them. These are in three-minute rounds, by the way. Three three-minute rounds. This is not a 12-round, 15-round fight. These are three-minute rounds, three rounds, and he's knocking everybody unconscious. They brought the gold medalist from the Olympics over from Poland to fight Sonny Liston. If you haven't guessed what Sonny Liston done, let me tell you, he knocked him out too. Sonny went on to become a professional after his Golden Glove experiences. Two of his most famous fights was against Muhammad Ali. Uh, there's many out there who believe that those fights were not on the level, especially with Liston tied in with the Italian mob and the fact that Liston was a heavy gambler. And also, uh, years after those fights, Liston was found dead in his apartment and supposedly had enough heroin in his body that would have killed an elephant. Thing was this, Liston didn't do heroin. Liston was afraid, according to his family and friends, he was afraid of needles. He was a heavy drinker, didn't mess with heroin. Let's take a look at some of these other great Hall of Fame champions. Bojack. Bojack fought more main events in Madison Square Garden than any other fighter ever. Bojack was also at the Fifth Street Gym where I trained. There's Carlos Monzon from Argentina. Carlos ruled the middleweight championships for years and years. That's Flashy Lorde, great champion, great world champion from the Philippines. And that's uh, from Puerto Rico, the great lightweight champion, Hall of Famer, Carlos Ortiz. Notice the gloves these guys are wearing. Notice the equipment they use. That's Willie Pep. They had access to boxing gloves. They could have used sparring gloves. But when they punched on the bags, like Archie Moore here, over 220 professional fights. Think these guys didn't know what they were doing? Do you think there wasn't a good reason for them using gloves like that? That's Jack Dempsey right there. And that's Rocky Marciano. You see their gloves. They had access to sparring gloves. They could have been punching, punching bags with sparring gloves. And this is one of the guys from the martial arts. Uh, it's not Jackie Chan, it's the other fella. Bruce Lee. Looks like he must have knew something. I bet he knew the secret see him using a thin bag glove. And there's Ezra Charles using a glove that looks very similar to the gloves that they use in the UFC today. Boxing has had a glove like that for over 100 years. That's Archie Moore with a similar glove to what you would say was an MMA glove on his hands. He used that for a bag glove. That's, that's Max Bear. Max Bear lost his title to the Cinderella Man. Max Bear, his son, was Jethro Bodine from the Beverly Hillbillies. And that's Sean O'Grady. He was promoted probably better than any other American fighter ever. He was 15 years old when he turned pro. And he's had 100 fights by the time he was 20. And that's Mike Tyson. With what, what looks like a, an MMA glove. And that's Mike Tyson right there. Well, did you learn something? Did you get something from the video? Hope you enjoyed the photos anyhow. I know I did. Well, the answer to the question... If you have it, put it in the comment section down below. Why did all the old school Hall of Fame greats, all of them, use a thin bag glove? That's the question. Let me see your answer. Thank you.